So we've seen all the marketing speak and presentations, but can ray tracing really make that great of an impact on games? Well, we're going to explore a game that's been around for quite some time, so that maybe we can shed some light on this situation. So if you're here for more NVIDIA news, sorry, sort of. I mean, we'll likely reference recent announcements as to help better explain what we're talking about here. Now on to Quake 2. That's right, Quake 2. See, a graphics programmer, we'll call him Ed for short, took on the task of implementing a real-time GPU path tracing in Quake 2. But Keith, you're talking about ray tracing, so why bring up path tracing? Well, I think Chunky so elegantly put it this way. Path tracing is a real-time algorithm similar to ray tracing in which rays are cast from a virtual camera and traced through a simulated scene. Path tracing uses random sampling to incrementally compute a final image. The random sampling in path tracing causes noise to appear in the rendered image. So it's kind of like backwards from the way ray tracing would typically work. So rather than coming from the light to the eye, it goes from the eye to the light and tracks backwards, but it'll give us kind of an idea of how things would look. Now, something new important to note is noise. Noise is very important here, and you'll see why soon. It'll also make more sense why NVIDIA focused pretty heavily on the idea of denoising. And don't worry, we have an example of that too, and what a hybrid render of this game might look like. So, what hardware do we use to run a 1997 released Quake 2 powered by the id Tech 2 engine? Well, my workstation. A Ryzen 7 1800X at 4 GHz, 32 GB of DDR4 2800, and a GeForce GTX 980 Ti. As you can already see, Quake 2, while it hasn't aged terribly, is still a far cry from what games look like today. But what if one complex, because I'm not going to pretend that it's easy or simple, change was made to the lighting engine to replace it utilizing path tracing? The change is simply astonishing. And before you cringe at the noise, and that's what the flickers and specs are, just take in at just what is going on. No longer is the entire world lit up with some brighter and darker spots. You're now seeing just what you would be able to see by the light provided in the game. You can really tell something is going on as you notice the reflections of light bouncing across floor tiles, and the shadows are simply incredible. Now, do you really think we could have seen this in a game back when it was made in the late 90s, in real time? So about that noise, our writer Usman, who is very passionate about ray tracing, took this image and applied a little work to clean it up as though a denoiser was applied and what it would look like if it was using hybrid rendering method similar to what RTX is doing. And the difference is absolutely jaw-dropping. I did go on and enable ambient occlusion on top of using path trace, tracing function, and while it did make the world more vivid while retaining the light and shadow effects, the noise was simply too much to enjoy playing this way. At the end of the day, I think it's fair to say that if real-time lighting effects like path tracing and ray tracing can be applied to games going forward, it really could be as big a deal as some are making it out to be. Now if this does seem like something you'd love to give a try, I'll leave a link down in the description below so that you can. Well. This has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. I hope you enjoy the discussion, and we'd love for you to subscribe so that we can catch you in the next one.